Hey folks, welcome into the program this morning. We're going to be talking about four great mics under $200. We're going to get into it right after this. You want to be a voiceover artist and just want to know the exact steps to take to make it happen. Earl Hall, voiceover artist, author, and coach has three dynamic books just for you. Steps to voiceover success. Start, build, and grow a successful voiceover career will guide you to start your VO journey. Everything from microphone selection, studio setup, and getting work. How to build a business around your voiceover skills will show you how to take your voiceover career to a much higher level and show you how to really go after high level clients and make you stand out from every other voice actor out there. Voiceover domination, get more clients and make more money will teach you the high level tactics and show you the mindset you must have to win and treat your voiceover business like a real business and be a true boss. These three hard hitting books are all available on Amazon right now in paperback and Kindle. Click the link to get your copy now. All right, welcome in everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me on this Friday morning. I'm here with you. The brand new voiceover artist, up and coming voiceover artist, artist looking to start, build and grow a successful voiceover career. We've got a great one for you today. I want to welcome everyone in. Go ahead and shout me. Go ahead and put your shout out in the uh, live chat there, the live comments there. I'd love to shout you out as well um, as you're coming in. This show today, uh, it's been in the works for me for a minute now. Um, I've got all my desk here. I've got these microphones that I've been using and have been using and still use over the years um, to really get me started in voiceover. As a matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and put in the comments, what microphone are you using for voiceover? Um, and if you're not using a mic yet, um, just let me know. Haven't bought my mic yet. And um, so we'll be able to have uh, this great conversation. Hey, Amit, glad to have you here. You're always a faithful one on the show. Thank you so much for being here with me this morning and the rest of us as well. We've got Tony in the house. Hey, Tony, glad to have you in here with us, man. Um, look, <clears throat> I talked last week about the most important part of your entire chain in, in voiceover, which is your recording environment. Um, without a proper recording environment, it makes absolutely no sense. Um, and it doesn't matter what kind of microphone you have, because if your recording environment sucks, the microphone isn't going to make that big of a difference. It's just not. It's going to be echoey and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, Tony uh, is saying use the Sennheiser MKE 600. Nice microphone. Um, with that, uh, Tracy P is here. She says she's just starting. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for being, uh, um, being on the live stream with us today, Tracy. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Most definitely. There's always been this back and forth, um, over the years behind whether you should use a, um, XLR type microphone, you know, or a USB microphone, uh, while doing voiceover. And it's, it's, it's one of those debates that I guess has gone on. I'm just here to say you can stop the debate, right? It, it's, you know, the recording environment is most important. So let's get that nailed down first. Um, Amit is saying uses the AT2020, um, from Audio Technica. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and Tracy is saying hello to everyone. So let's kind of get into this here. I'm going to go back. Um, to my first microphone, which is actually a USB microphone. And it is the one that Amit uses. I don't know, Amit, if you use the uh, USB version or the XLR version, but it is my handy dandy AT2020. Now this one is a USB connection that's on the end of it here, but this microphone served me so well coming out of the gate, it really did. Now, all of these microphones, um, you're going to be able to find the links to them inside um, in the show notes in the description here as well. So if you want to grab one of these, you can go ahead and do that. Now, the one that's showing on the screen right now, this one is not a USB connection. This is an XLR connection. 
and you can grab this right now on Amazon for only 99 bucks. And again, the link I'm going to have all the, the links are already in the description for this show. Um, so you can go ahead and grab that if you like. It is a very sturdy microphone. It is, it is one of those microphones that will continue to serve you well for a long time to come. And especially with this one being an XLR connection, all you need to do is have, you know, a, a, a audio interface, uh, something like a Focusrite Solo. You can pick those up for, you know, a, I think under, they're right around $120 uh, to have an audio interface to go along with this microphone. But you can grab this one for $99. bucks. Emmett, let me know, are you using the, um, the, the XLR version or are you using the USB version? I would love to know that um, from Emmett. Now, the microphones that we're, we're about to get into... Um, uh, I'm just looking because I, I'm like excited about talking about these microphones right now. Now, this little handy dandy microphone, this is an XLR mic. This is a Rode and it's actually called a Rode pod mic and it is an XLR connection. You can see it's the Rode pod mic. It's an XLR connection. But this just this looks like a small mic. And it is. But this mic is like chunky. Um, this is a actually a pretty heavy microphone in comparison to other mics that I've used and it produces good sound. You've even seen, um, even with me on this show from time to time, you've probably seen me use this particular microphone and it's, you can see I last purchased this. I purchased this over a year ago, April 17th, 2021. And I got this microphone and I was very surprised. I did a review of it on Amazon as well. I was very surprised at, at the quality of it um, for such a low end, if you want to call it low end, $99 microphone. It's not going to break the bank on you on this. You will, obviously, since it's an XLR connection, you're going to need to have a, um, an audio interface to go along with it. Um, also, if you want to grab you know, a holder for your mic, one of the scissor booms or whatever it is, even tabletop, you can grab one of those as well for this particular microphone. One of the things that, you know, talking about the AT2020 and then also this um, Rode pod mic from Rode, um, these microphones have very good performance. They have very good performance. Emmett, you didn't put up yet, man. Are you using the um, XLR or are you using the USB uh, microphone from the, for the AT2020? The, the, the build quality of these microphones now, whether we're talking about a USB mic or whether we're talking about an XLR mic, and if you don't know like the difference, let me just grab this again. This is what would be considered a USB connection, that little connection that's right in there, um, the USB connector that plugs right into your computer, and then you would have... This is what would be an XLR connection. You've got the three prongs that are there. You know, you got the fat wire um, that goes on that. And then you would have to actually have, like I said before, you're going to need to have a audio interface to be able to connect that to your computer. The audio interfaces are always normally USB connection. You plug your mic into the audio interface. You plug the audio interface into your computer. And then that's how that sound um, gets transferred over. But the build quality of... I mean, all these newer mics, the, the latest microphones, and I'm going to say if you're spending somewhere in the range, especially if you're just starting out, $80 and up, it's almost like I don't think you can really go wrong you, you know, with that, especially just starting out. I think what happens is a lot of times, especially brand new voiceover artists, they think they have to have the top of the line everything. Right. They have to have the top of the line, this top of the line, that and they have to break the bank. And the truth is, you talk to someone like me or you talk to someone like, you know, even I've heard Bill DeWeese say both of us started out with like fifty dollar USB mics and we started getting work. And you'll hear me say over and over and over again, don't start spending money on a lot of expensive gear until you've shown yourself that you can sell your voice. If you can't make money on an eighty dollar microphone, you can't make money on a thousand dollar microphone. You understand what I'm saying? Just prove it out first. And then as you get better and better, maybe higher in clients or something like that, then that might justify you going ahead, spending some more money 
on what it is that you, you want to do within your voiceover career. Because let's just be, be honest, you know, a lot of us start off on places and, and work forever on a site like a Fiverr and things like that. People aren't looking for Disney level production of things. They're, they're just not. As long as you have the very bare minimum, the simplest things, the most important thing being your recording environment, the microphone then starts becoming, um, you know, then you can start looking at different mics if you, if you want to upgrade. But if you're a gearhead like I am, uh, then you always like to get more and more gear. Now, this next microphone that I want to show you, let me just grab it here. It's this microphone from Shure. Now, this microphone, full disclosure, um, this microphone is not under $200, but I thought it worthy of getting in on this because of one simple fact. This microphone is not only XLR, but it is also USB. You can see the connections right here. You've got the XLR connection and then you've got the USB connection that's in there as well. This microphone, and I got this, and let me pull this, uh, pull this one up on screen. And again, all these links are right in uh, the description of the video. This, is, this mic comes in at 249. So it's a little bit above the $200 price point. But the reason I thought that I should bring this in was because of the fact that this can operate with or without a audio interface. And it is amazing. This microphone um, from Shure, it's the Shure MV7 USB. Um, and you can use it with XLR as well as USB. Um, this microphone actually also comes with its own audio software that actually helps to enhance the quality of this mic. I, I did a, a review of this microphone on Amazon as well. Um, and you can see that. And I'm sure it's on my YouTube channel um, as well. But this microphone has an amazing sound quality to it. And when you go and um, uh, look at those videos that I produced and you actually hear the sound quality of this. And actually, I'm just going to let me just scroll down a bit. And I'm wondering if my review is here of this microphone on Amazon. Wait a minute. I think I just passed by it. Nope, that's not me. All right. So this one is not showing up right now on Amazon, but I know I do have a review and I'm sure it is on this particular YouTube channel. And so when you're looking to have a mic that is multifunctional, that you can actually grow with this mic, I'm just telling you, it, it does have an amazing presence for that price point. You know, with that, out of the microphones that, that I've shown so far between the AT2020 the Rode Pod mic, and now this Shure microphone, which one may be of interest to you? And also, like I said, the links are in the description of this video that you're watching right now so that you can go ahead and take a look at those right on Amazon as well. So I've provided you with those links. Those are my affiliate links, by the way. So thank you for using those links in there. Now, <clears throat> there has been... There have been some coveted mics over the years. There is this, the Sennheiser MKH-416. That's like, you know, the shotgun mic of all shotgun mics, right? And then you've got the Neumann TLM-103 as well. Now, those two mics I have owned. I, the Neumann TLM-103 was the first big purchase uh, that I made of a microphone. Uh, the second one, I think about a year later, um, I wanted to get more into the shotgun mics, um, you know, I, I purchased the MK, the Sennheiser MKH416. And then something happened a few years ago. This little mic came out. And it changed the game for a lot of people in VO. Now, this shotgun mic, I'm just going to take the cover off. This is it right here. It's the Senco Mic D2. Senco Mic D2. I'm trying to get it in focus there. There we go. The Senco Mic D2. Um, this is an XLR microphone. Um, and there's the recording um, end of it here. So you would have it like this uh, while you were recording. 
this microphone from a lot of people in our community, in the voiceover community, started really talking about this microphone. And this is my voiceover mic, by the way. This is my voiceover mic that I use. And I could, n- I could not tell the difference between this and the $1,000 Sennheiser MKH416. I literally could not tell a difference. Now, I've got the link for this as well um, down in the description. And you can see this microphone right now is $199 on Amazon. Link is in the description for you with that. Um, I was thoroughly impressed, and that's why it is still yet to date years later, that this is still my go-to mic for voiceover. I don't use any other mic for voiceover other than this one that you're seeing on your screen right now. Um, it's from Senco and it's called the Senco Mic D2. And I've got, I think I've got a couple of reviews on this. I'm just scrolling down. I, I want to see, you know, I want to see. Do, is my video here um, that I did on this one? It does not look like it is. Um, but it doesn't look like there are many videos on this microphone. But I have reviewed this microphone. But I can tell you, um, because this is my microphone that I use. You can see I bought this. Two years ago, almost uh, December 24th, 2019. You see it right there on the screen. All of these microphones, you can see I've, I have, I've purchased them. Um, so it is the reason why I can make the recommendation that I make for these particular microphones. When you're trying to figure out microphone selection, I mean, it took me years to really settle on one and it's only $199 and I, I, you know, this gets me the work that I get. Um, But when it comes to microphone selection, it's not just about what I say. It's not just about what any voiceover artist says about their mic, because we all love our mics. And there's a reason why we love the mics that we use. And that's because of the way that we hear our voice when we play it back. You know, we record our voice, we play it back, and we there's something about that mic that we like. Just because you've purchased a mic doesn't mean that'll be the last mic that you purchase. Now, I'm pretty settled on the mic that I use, which is my, you know, Senco Mic D2. That's, I'm done. But over the years, and you can see, I've just shown you three other mics, and I've told you about two other mics that I've actually used, which is the Norman Taylor 103, as well as the um, Sennheiser MKH416. But you will get very attuned. The more that you listen to your audio, the more that you do editing and processing of your audio, you will start to hear nuances. And if you do look at changing microphones, you don't want to change mics because someone says you ought to. Now, some places, some cities have um, uh, guitar centers. I, I think that's the name of the chain, guitar center. And you can go in and you could actually test out microphones and really get a clear hearing of what it is that you may sound like on a particular microphone that you're thinking about purchasing. Now, there's different tones, obviously, from, you know, men to women, even from women to women and men to men. There's different tonalities that we have. Um, You know, I go from a tenor, I can go a little bit deep and go baritone, but it's not my normal speaking, right? So this is my normal speaking, which is more tenor. You know, so different microphones are going to give you different types of tonalities in the mic that you use. But at the beginning of your career, do not worry about that because it'll drive you insane. It will drive you insane. The way to start is to start with what you can afford. Just start there. Do not listen to anyone. I don't care if it's me, la di da or anybody tell you you've got to spend this amount of money <clears throat> excuse me in order to make money in voiceover because all of us you know a lot of us that have been doing this for a while we started literally like i said earlier with like 50 dollar microphones right i want to know what kind of questions you may have for me on your setup or your microphone or anything like that um, before we close out this show we're coming to the bottom of the hour and i usually stay on for about 30 minutes if necessary Um, So if you do have questions, I don't care if it's about your gear um, or if it's about your um, your microphone, your your setup, your environment. um, This is the time to ask. Right. I want to make sure that you also are aware um, 
you know, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you do subscribe to this channel. I do go live each and every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern. You guys know I've been here um, and I'm going to continue to be here for you. If you have not picked up uh, my book, got it right here. Steps to voiceover success. If you're a brand new voiceover artist or even if you've been in the game for a minute, this book is, well, humble brag, it's pretty good. Um, it's very, it's very readable. It's very understandable. It's not too techy or heady. And also if you get the Kindle version of this on Amazon, um, you'll be able to click links that are in the Kindle version. That'll take you to free trainings and things like that. So I wanted to go ahead and make you aware of that and let you know, I mean, you guys are awesome. It doesn't look like any comments or, or questions are coming in and that's okay. Um, but I did want to uh, bring this to you today to just get you started, especially if you haven't, you know, if you're like to read like Tracy and you haven't purchased your microphone yet, you know, don't sweat over this. Don't make this a big project. Start with where you are with your budget and start practicing. Start doing this. And when I say, you know, a lot of people that, look, the hardest part of this whole thing is to just get started. It is literally the hardest part, but you cannot start if you don't have equipment and the only equipment you need to start with is just a simple usb microphone let's just get you going all right so tracy says i would like to know um, a realistic startup budget for a new artist well let's work this out so if you're going to start off with a usb microphone okay i just you know a hundred dollars let's just put that as the point a hundred dollars and then from that, all you need is you can download free software, um, which is called Audacity, uh, which is a, a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, that can get you going right there. And then you want a decent recording environment. You want to watch the video that I did last week on recording environments and how I even you know record in my wife's clothes closet. I did a whole video on that watch last week's episode and you're going to go through and see that so it's not about breaking the bank and here's the thing i think people sometimes ask those types of questions because you see all of these other voiceover artists they've got booths and they've got these two thousand dollar microphones and you know all this gear and equipment you don't need that to start i'm telling you this flat out most of us that get into spending um absurd amounts of money <laughs> on our voiceover gear and aren't even doing that level of voiceover for like other companies, like big companies, but we just want the gear and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want, Hey, go for it, break the bank, go for what it is that you want. But I'm telling you to get into this industry and to make good money, you don't have to break the bank on that. Most of us just go in that direction because we want to get better and better at our craft. All right, so M.A. Bushling is saying your room looks wide open. How do you keep it from sounding um, loaded with reverb? Also, you wrote a great book, highly recommended. Thank you, M.A. Bushling. Well, I am definitely in a wide open environment. Um, let's see, even if I show another like angle of where I am, I'm definitely in a wide open environment here. So um, I don't know how come <laughs> it's not all echoey other than my mic placement and position. And then also I'm using um, a Shure SM7B, which is the granddaddy of all these, the Shure mics basically, um, which is a very good mic and it helps do that canceling out of the noise and uh, bouncing off the hard flat surfaces and reverbing. Now you say you can't hear it, but when I listen to my, my live streams, I hear it. I, I, I can hear it, but you know what, it, you know what I can tell you about this as well. Now this microphone, how much is the, let's just look this up. Um, let's see, the Shure SM7B is what I have. And I forget how much this, this microphone costs. Um, but okay, it's $399, $399 for this microphone. Um, a lot of voiceover artists do use this microphone. Um, but I, what I was going to say is, is that I have done voiceover just sitting here before something quick down and dirty that someone just needed real quick. I have just sat here and just done it. And no one said boo about it. Uh, I, the comment, oh man, that sounds great. I love it. Thank you so much. You're the greatest in sliced bread, you know, all that kind of stuff. So again, 
your, your recording environment is the most important, but also what we have to understand is people don't hear what it is that we hear. Um, and what I mean by that is when you have done this for so many years, your ear becomes very sensitive to everything, especially if you're using your, your headphones and things like that. Your ear becomes very sensitive. I know that when I do record on this mic, I can hear an echo. You may not hear it, but my ears are sensitized to it. So I definitely hear it. Now, obviously, if I back up from the mic, it probably does sound a lot different, right? But when I'm right here on the microphone, I mean, I'm this far from the microphone. So my voice is going directly into that, right? Um, I'm off to the side a bit so that, you know, I don't pop a lot of peas and, and all those plosives and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it does make a difference. But I thoroughly want you to understand that if you're just starting out in voiceover, all these little technical things, other than your recording environment, is just going to get in your way. The thing for you to do is to get started. So when are you going to get started? Like, that's the thing behind all of this. Well, look, we are at the bottom of the hour. I definitely want to thank all of you for joining me today. Go back and listen to that from last week. If you want to get a good understanding of your recording environment and why it's so important, listen to that episode from last week um, so that you can get a clear understanding of that. Don't worry about breaking the bank on equipment and gear because you don't have to. The thing to do is to get started. The thing to do is to get started. Tracy, I'm sorry I just saw this pop up in regards to voiceover. Is it considered a form of acting, correct? Yes, it is. I asked because I would like to know, are you able to uh, take on the, what is it? I didn't see what it said, the rest of it. Um, Take on the persona. I'm not sure what that means. Of various age groups. Okay, there she goes, of various age groups. If you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. I choose to operate within my normal speaking voice. There are voice actors out there that can do different age groups and things of that nature. And that's fine, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all about you getting started. You got to try and do what it is that you want to do and know that it's just going to take some time, but nothing starts until you start. All right, guys, thanks so much for being here with me today. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description that I have for the different microphones that I have used and still use. And as always, I love my little Senko Mic D2. That is my go-to mic. All right, guys, you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you back here next Friday. Take care.